Hello everyone and welcome back. So this video is going to kind of be a full video on my Wales road trip that I did back in summer last year. So those three videos I made about that road trip are some of the most popular videos on my channel and I've had a few comments on them from people asking, can you tell us exactly you know, what you did on your road trip and uh, the structure of it. And so what I'm going to do today is give you a day by day plan of everything I did um, on my trip. And this is a trip that I would definitely recommend to you in the summer of this year as, you know, we don't know if we're going to be able to go abroad. So this Wales road trip is one I would definitely recommend to you in 2021. So without further ado, let's begin. Here is my ultimate guide to the ultimate Wales road trip. So I did this trip before I got my fancy camera, so it's all phone footage. So I thought I would spruce up the video a little bit, add a few animations here and there, just to cover up some of the potato quality footage from last summer. This trip follows the entire coastline of Wales and our first stop is Cardiff. So we didn't have very long in Cardiff because due to COVID, all of the attractions were closed. But what I can recommend to you is visit the Cardiff docks. They were really pretty, really great. You can see all the way over to Western Supermare, which is the UK's worst beach. So what's better? I'm only joking, it is not one of the worst beaches in the UK, um, but it's not a great beach for swimming at, unless you enjoy swimming in just pure mud, then, then it's great. So when everything is open and everything's all back to normal, I would recommend maybe that you spend a night in Cardiff. We only spent a few hours, but there were some really great things. The Cardiff Castle looked incredible. There's some great museums, really interesting parks, so much to do when it's all open so you could spend uh, your whole night there. But let's move on. So next we drove down to our place in sort of Carmarthenshire and around the Pembrokeshire coast and the place we stayed is called Pendine. We stayed here for five nights and I kind of suggest spending more than one night in each place. Try and find a good base of operations. It's so much easier and so much nicer than having to change and go to a new accommodation each night. So much more chilled out. And there is so much to do around Carmarthenshire and the Pembrokeshire coast. You could easily spend five, six whole days here and everything is within an hour drive of Pendine. So Pendine's the perfect place, but anywhere around here is great. So now I'm gonna walk you through everything we did in these first five days uh, around the Pembrokeshire coast. So day one. So a great start to the Pembrokeshire coast is a walk that I really enjoyed. It was a walk from Saundersfoot to Tenby. You really take in a lot of the Pembrokeshire coast and some really gorgeous scenery on this walk. Just make sure if you're with your girlfriend, avoid the shops because there's many of them and she will get you stuck. We always need details for you, don't we? Yes. Liar. Yes. Okay. What? <laughs> so yeah, it's a really great walk, but when you arrive at Tenby, if you've got a bit of time left in the day, depending on how quick the walk was, have a bit of an explore of Tenby. There's so much to do there, but if you don't get to see everything, don't worry, because we're gonna be back in a few days, back to Tenby as well. So on to day two, I'd recommend exploring a little bit around Pendine if you are staying there. There's a really nice beach with some really interesting history. Just a few miles up, we actually found this kind of really cool boat wreck. There's some cool rock pools there. And also I think the beach used to be used for some land speed records were set there, I believe, back in the 1920s. I think there's a little museum about that. So that's really great as well. And there's also nothing like a morning walk along the beach to wake you up ready for the day because the place we are going to after this is Larne Castle. And by the way, there is a lot of castles to visit on this trip, so feel free to take your pick. I think I am just have a bit of an unhealthy obsession with castles, maybe. Uh, absolutely love them, love the history, and so yeah, take your pick. Don't feel like you have to visit all 10 million castles that I visited on this trip. But Larne Castle is really great. It is a really imposing fortress, and it's also right next to the house of the famous Welsh poet Dylan Thomas. Really great walk to get there as well, so that's something you could do on day two. Okay, so for day three, this is a really, really active day. What we're doing is we're heading towards the north side of the Pembrokeshire coast to a town called St. David's, which is the smallest town in the UK and is home to one of the most intricate cathedrals that I think I've ever seen. Not the biggest cathedral, but definitely the most detailed. It's also right next to the ruined old Bishop's Palace, uh, which was really great, so you can kind of take your pick. 
And also to continue on with our active theme for the day, we're then gonna head to New Gale, and I would suggest, this is my highlight personally, to do a bit of surfing. New Gale's a really great beach for beginners. There is so many sort of surf hire shops, so if you don't have any boards or wetsuits, you're fine. Really nice beginner waves, really friendly. Uh, just a great beach to kind of give it a go, because why not? Pembrokeshire Coast is an incredible place to surf. And you know there's never anything more appealing in the cold, wet and harsh Welsh weather than just getting in the sea and being completely freezing and having a great time. And also if you have any time left in the end of the day after all this, drive back down along the Pembrokeshire coast. You'll see so many kind of scenic little alcoves and beaches that I would totally recommend, some really pretty things. And you never know what you'll see, so explore. And sometimes when you're lost, that's when you find the best stuff. And now for day four, we're going back to Tembi because we barely scratched the surface the first time. So I won't go into too much detail about what there is to do in Tembi because there is so much and I have a full video on Tembi. I will link it here if you're interested. But I will talk about a few of my main highlights. So my favorite thing to do in Tembi was to get a boat trip to Caldy Island and also just exploring the town, chilling with a drink, overlooking the beach in the sun but maybe that's just because it's March right now and I am reminiscing about the sun uh, and just can't wait for it to be back this summer. But yeah, those are my great things. If you're really interested in more on Tembi, check out the video. Now, before we move on from the Pembrokeshire coast and Carmarthenshire, two more things I want to recommend, two more castles, in fact. So the first castle that I recommend is Manabia Castle. This was a more renovated castle. There was kind of a, a cafe and it was really great to just relax, really easy to get to. Or if you want a more active castle and you want to climb up a massive hill to find a kind of old fortress, I would suggest Clan Stefan Castle. This is a rough, tough, battle-filled history of a castle and it's about a 20 minute drive away from Manabia. So take your pick or be like me and see both. So now our time is finished in the Pembrokeshire coast and it's time to drive up the coast towards Snowdonia. And some different ideas for some stops along the way. If it's a rainy day like it was when we went, uh, you could visit Devil's Bridge, which is some really nice walks through some crazy, crazy great looking waterfalls and forests. Or if it's a great day and you want more beaches, visit the town of Aberystwyth. So much to do, so many incredible beaches and a really, really, really nice walk over some coastal cliffs to the town of Borth, which is definitely something for you to look into. But either way, we then end up in Snowdonia. Now the place we stayed is a place called Porth Maddock because we are students and we like to travel on a budget because we have no money like all students do. So we found a really cheap travel lodge to stay in Porth Maddock. But to be honest, stay anywhere in Snowdonia because we're gonna be driving all around Snowdonia over the next few days. So we're gonna be staying in Snowdonia for four days and on day one, we're gonna start off by climbing up Snowdon. But to be honest, you can do this any day. I would suggest you pick the nicest, clearest, best weather day to climb Snowdon if you want the epic view at the top. And we also decided to go in the evening to avoid the crowds. It gets really, really busy in the morning. So if you go later in the day, you can avoid a lot of the crowds. Just make sure you give yourselves enough time to get down again before it gets dark. Uh, that's something to think about as well. But the sunset around Snowdon is incredible. One of the best views I've seen. And again, if you want more details on different routes you can take up Snowdon and different things to do in Snowdonia, check out my full video on Snowdonia. I will link that up here as well. And now on day two, we're heading to the nice little town of Bedgellet that has a very sinister story, uh, kind of a folk tale surrounding it of, oh, what was it? Dog. Yeah, dog. Is that it? That's the folk tale. Dog that tried to the baby, but in the end he was I need to the check baby. this. Yeah, so the story of Bed Gellert was a dog called Gellert, and Bed Gellert is actually the Welsh for the grave of Gellert, the dog. And essentially, the story goes that the owner of the dog thought that the dog had killed his baby because he finds the baby missing one day, and the dog is covered in blood. Uh, and he kills the dog, and then he finds out that the baby wasn't killed by the dog; it was killed by a wolf. That the dog had killed the wolf to save the baby. So it's a very depressing story, but don't be put off. Bedgola is an incredible town and there's so much to see here. It's so idyllic and just peaceful. And also a great thing to visit today is Carnarthen Castle. Now I got confused when I was there. I got confused in one of my last videos and I had a few comments pick me up on it. I have learned a new fact that Carnarthen is in the north of Wales and Carmarthen is in the south of Wales. And I had no clue which was which. I got it confused, but I've learned we're all good. Why have you Welsh people got to be so strange with your names? But anyway, yes, Carnarthen Castle, 
great castle in Snowdonia, worth a visit. So now on day three, we are going to Anglesey for a full day. We're specifically going to the island of Holyhead, which is right on the tip of Anglesey. So my personal highlight of Anglesey was the walk around the South Stack Lighthouse, which is just an incredible walk. Another thing we visited was the place with the longest place name, which you can see here in this extreme sign. I'm not gonna try and say it because I will fail terribly. Nah, give up. You think you can remember it? Lumber, clander, clan... No. Oh. I, I want to Google it. Glan, fair, something, something. It doesn't count. It, it, it ends with go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. That's it. Van That's Gogh. it. At the end. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. He was born there. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, as I said in my other Snowdonia video, unless you enjoy looking at signs with long words on. This is not a very interesting place for you. There's nothing else really to it except for these weird signs. But luckily we have the mental age combined probably of a two year old. So we had a great time in this town for the half hour we were there. Okay, day four, the final day, I have saved the best for last. <clears throat> Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> we are heading to the town of Conway and Conway Castle. So I was so sad that I couldn't go inside this castle because obviously it was closed. It was one of the most incredible castles I've seen just from the outside. It kind of, the walls spread throughout the entire town of Conway. But I think I would love to definitely go back in the future to look inside. And the town of Conway is also great as well. Uh, there's also um, Britain's smallest house there, which is very interesting. Here's a photo of it against Ellie, but against Ellie it looks pretty much normal size. No, you're not, no, rude. <laughs> And that pretty much summarizes my entire trip. I hope you enjoyed this video. On the way home, we, sa we sailed. We didn't sail, we drove. We drove, we drove. We sailed. <laughs> Just like, oh, on the yeah. pavement, on, on the, the waterway. Yeah. <laughs> we drove back via uh, the Duke of Lancaster because I also am obsessed with ships. Ships and castles sums me up pretty much. And I thought I wanted to go and see it. I thought it'd be really interesting. But unfortunately the ship has kind of been fenced off now. You can't really see it. And it also used to have some really interesting graffiti and paintings on it, but they've all been painted over. So it's very sad, very sad. But yeah, you can drive back along the North Coast anyway. The roads were incredible. Some really great scenery there as well. So if you have more time and you want to extend your break even longer, I would suggest then going into the center of Wales. Uh, I used to go here all the time. As a kid, I think I've been, I don't know, maybe like 50 times throughout my life. And one thing I would suggest there is the Elan Valley. It's kind of like a hiker's paradise. Uh, it's where all the dams are and it brings all the water um, to Birmingham. That comes from the Elan Valley as well, which is interesting. But it never fails to take my breath away every time and I really suggest a trip there. And there's also a lot of great towns and really interesting scenery that you can definitely look into if you're heading into the center of Wales because then you have pretty much seen the entire country and you can tick Wales off the to-do list. Completed it. And so yeah, we have reached the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you want a sort of day-to-day -day, uh, itinerary, check out the description. I will write the whole thing down there. So I hope you enjoyed and make sure you subscribe for more. I got many cool travels coming up this summer and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.